Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio this evening. So tonight I am going to paint this a bottle of Coke with a little glass of Coke next to it. I'll let you determine whether that Coke is half full or half empty. Uh, to me it looks a little half full. Uh, but anyways, I've pre-drawn this image. I've put it here on a piece of B paper. And because my B paper came from a roll I've taped it down to some uh, plastic there the paints that I'm using this evening are my M Graham paints in my palette you can see in the lower left hand side there I do have one color on this palette that is not M Graham and it's a black it's a Windsor Newton ivory black and I will be using the hat quite a bit in this painting uh, the brushes that I have on my palette, the one that I have in my hand right now, are Rubloff brushes. These are the uh, Pro series of brushes. They're Kolinsky Sable brushes. I like them very much. Here we go. A little bit of that ivory black I was talking about. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber in there. And uh, maybe just a touch of yellow ochre. Just want to get some color on this bottle and uh, get it going, get started with it. We'll worry about the cola here in a little bit, but let's get some nice, cool colors on here. Uh, that looks to me like maybe a little bit of cerulean blue on that bottle. Anyway, we just want to let those colors mix on the page and get happy together and blend and run together and do some good things for us. Uh, I do have some other brushes on on my table there that you can see the uh, ones with the natural color handles. Those are Dana Squirrel Quill Mop brushes. Oh, I must have run outside the line there just a bit. I don't know why I'm worried about it. Uh, we're going to paint the background on this, so that little bit outside the line wouldn't have mattered, but. Um, you see me, I'm being a little careful there. I'm painting around the label on the bottle here. Let me just adjust my camera. You, as you can see, it's got a manual zoom on it. So <laughs> if I push it up, it zooms out. If I pull it in, it zooms in. All right, working with a little bit of green here. It's a lot of phthalo green uh, to get this bright green straw that's there. And there it is. Maybe I put a little bit of blue in there, just a touch of a neutral tint to tone it down ever so slightly. But the vast majority of that color is thalo green. And again, that is uh, an M. Graham uh, paint. It's a thalo green, a yellow shade. And I'm going to drop... Just a shadow line on the side there. This is straight neutral tint. And there it goes. Now it looks like there's a bit of roundness to that. Wipe off a little bit of color to put in just a touch of highlight. I just noticed that's an interesting brush that I had. That is a Simply Simmons brush. I'm not even sure where I've got that brush, and I'm not sure how it made it onto my palette. Uh, looking at some ref, uh, looking at the reference photo there, trying to figure out where I need to paint, what I need to paint, how I need to paint it. I think I've got most of it, anyways. We'll just go ahead with it. What I want to do is leave a lot of the highlight that's there there, uh, and paint around it as much as possible. Come back and highlight it a little bit. It looks like I may have touched a little bit of red paint there. That's okay. There it is. I mixed some. We're going to darken that right up. That red that's there is a reflection on the glass from the label on the bottle. And mixing in some darks. Uh, and this really, for me, is a, it is a bit of a strange thing because I, I don't use that black as much as as maybe I should. I've, I'm beginning to learn to use black now. I've always mixed my own darks, uh, but using the black this much really forced me to think about how to use 
a black in a painting and how not to let it overtake the painting and become the focal point of it. It looks like my camera's having a little bit of trouble here. Uh, I think I get this figured out in future videos. It's the way it's oriented towards the papers, making it a bit tough. And I'd be a bit remiss if I didn't say that little bit of brown that you see in the glass there. That's a little bit of burnt umber that I put in there. Just in the back of that glass, a uh, reflection of the soda that's actually in there. <clears throat> I've mixed up a dark mixture here. A little sepia in there. A little burnt umber. A little bit of that black. It's really dark in that bottle. That cola that's in there. There it is. Going into just a little bit of blue. Obviously, I want to see a reflection on the top of that cola. Looks a little funny right now, but it'll look better when we're done with it. We're going to go over it with another color, but I want, I definitely want there to be a, a break, a difference between a horizontal color and a vertical color there. That blue is going to help with that. There we go. We've got that in there, and let's... <clears throat> Come on, Michael, let's move along to it a little. I don't want to cover up too much of that blue. But there's just a little bit right there that you can see. Uh, I do, as a painter, turn my page quite a lot. Uh, when I was learning the watercolor paint, was told it's fine to do. There's no issue with it. I do realize, however, that sometimes it makes it a little difficult to watch. <laughs> it's going back and forth, back and forth. I, I apologize for that. I don't apologize for turning the page. I apologize for it being a little difficult from time to time to watch. Uh, just hang with me if you could. I, I get through that. Um, or we'll get through that. I should say we'll get through that. And get on to something else and um, we're going to end up with quite a nice painting here at least in my opinion okay and so you can see now that I've got a I've got a coke bottle there and there's some dimensionality to it a little bit of dimensionality there's the glass has some interest on it and the glass glass has some interest on it also you do notice that it's pretty dark. Uh, we, I am going to put a background on it, and the background is going to be dark. And so that's why the glass, the, the colors in the glass have to be somewhat dark. <clears throat> All right, I'm going back up to the top of this bottle. I'm going to try to put on some of the darks, which are going to help to bring out some of the lights. And I'm going to try and figure out how dark to make my darks and how light to make my lights. <clears throat> and again, I'm picking up those same three colors in there. A little bit of the cerulean blue, a little bit of that yellow ochre, and of course that dark color which is uh, ivory black and a bit of burnt umber in it. And I'm painting around, I'm trying very carefully to paint around everything that would be a highlight and because we've got that first layer of paint down there, we've already got a highlight on it. I don't know what I'm doing there. A little bit of the straight cerulean blue here on the top. It's not a strict interpretation of the bottle. Uh, it's a loose interpretation of it, but I think it turns out great. And I'm just painting around as I come down the bottle, everything that seems to be in highlight. And I'm varying the colors as they are on the side. There's a, quite a bit of that ochre color on that side I'm looking at as we move across the bottle it gets darker and maybe a bit of bluer on the right hand side a bit of dark got to figure out how far I want to take that down right now and how far I want to go across 
So I'll just blend it as best I can and hope for the best. There we go. I don't want a hard edge at the bottom. And there's some dark lines on that side. If I get them in now, they will blend in a little bit and become maybe a little bit more natural as we see them. And, you know, the Coke bottle's got some, um, I don't know what it's, it's got some interest in the glass itself. So we can go ahead and be a little bit freer with how we put this down, our color down there. And maybe it's going to look like it follows the contour of that that bottle just a little bit. Yeah, maybe I touched it in and it's a little too wet for my taste. I'll just dab that out ever so slightly and nobody will ever know the difference because I won't tell them and I hope you guys won't tell anybody either. Continuing over onto the far right hand side, there's getting more blue in the mix over there. It looks like I got a little pure blue in there and that's fine. It's really going to help to make this bottle pop a little bit when we get the background on here. It does look a bit of a mess right now, but it's going to get there. It's going to look totally fine. I promise you that. All right, moving into a little bit of red back there. Just maybe a bit of a reflection from some of the red paint that's in the label. And there it is. There's the top of that bottle. Now we got to figure out how to do the bottom. Well, okay, maybe I'm not quite done with the top of the bottle. Upon further inspection, I needed a little bit more dark up there. I don't remember going back and redoing the top of that, but that's okay. Obviously, I did. All right. We've got our mix. Looks like it's a cola color. It's a bit of burnt umber. A bit of the... Ivory black again. The ivory black again is Windsor and Newton ivory black. It's not the M. Graham. I do have some M. Graham ivory black on the way that I'm going to be putting into my palette. So there will be no more Windsor and Newton paint on my palette. It will be all M. Graham paint. I'll have to use that Windsor Newton paint on a different palette, I suppose. And dropping in some color here. I can't have the top of the bottle be a stronger color and the bottom of the bottle be so much lighter. So I've got to kind of make those the same. They don't have to be exactly the same, but they have to be very similar in intensity, in saturation, I guess. There we go. Just trying to drop that on and and I want to get a good mix of colors in there. You can see I'm leaving plenty of that ochre color shine through. A uh, plenty of that blue color is still there. I don't want to take that away. That's going to give that glass of the bottle so much more interest when we're done with this. <clears throat> I'm not sure what I'm looking at up in the uh, in the corner where you see. A picture of me over there. I'm not sure what I was doing there. But let's move on to the glass now. And I don't think there's quite as much work to do on the glass, but there is a little bit to do. So let's get going with that. <clears throat> Again, a lot of this ochre. Let's put that on there. And I hope I mix in a little bit more blue on here too. I want to see a lot of interest uh, interest and in color on this glass. We've got that nice spot of green. There's some nice blue coming in. We've got that nice spot of uh, thalo green. That's going to be coming through this glass too. That's pretty cool. And uh, there are some there are some highlights over here. I'm a little reticent to paint over. I don't want to do too much over top of those. Uh, I want to let some of those shine through so we can see that bottle behind and the light coming off of the bottle as it's back behind it. If we're going to do one side of that straw. We probably ought to do the other side of that straw. Got a bit darker over here. 
and there you go a little green a little reflection from the straw that'll add a little bit of interest to everything and look nice and don't take away too much of that red there we go let's put some of that red right back in <clears throat> it does look pretty dark right now but it is going to lighten up as it dries uh, the coke bottle itself already has lightened pretty dramatically so uh, so I have a lot of faith that the glass is going to lighten quite a bit there we go it's just dark straight dark right there at the top almost straight uh, ivory black at the top of the glass there Hopefully that gives it a little bit more dimension, push it back in the background a little bit, uh, being that dark color, and make it seem like that glass is is three-dimensional. All right, we're going to go back, and uh, we've painted the top of this bottle, uh, meaning the glass portion of this bottle. Now we need to paint the cola portion of this bottle. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, more of this ivory black again i never ever thought in my life i would ever use ivory black this much <clears throat> as it turns out it's a wonderful color it's a it's a nice warm inviting black color uh it's not nearly as cold and crazy as let's say a lamp black and you can see as soon as i put in uh, that dark color, that blue on the top of it just really popped off of there. It really looks like a, a reflection off the top of that uh, drink now. <clears throat> and let's decide what we need to do. Getting a little bit more red on our brush. That must mean a label's coming. And here it is. We'll just paint something in. This is Pyrol Red, a nice fiery red that we're mixing in. And I'm not trying to spell anything out necessarily. I think everybody would know what kind of cola this is. I just want to get some red on there and some white on there. And everybody else can figure out what really it is on their own. All right, this is maybe the back of the label anyways. So it's not necessarily written straight out what this is. We're just going to leave a little bit here and there, some white here and there, and <clears throat> the viewer's uh, mind is going to fill in exactly what this is. There we go. Just like that. And all of a sudden, yes, yeah, you can see it, it totally looks like a Coke bottle now. <clears throat> Nothing to it. Simple as that. Okay, step back and think for a moment. Boy, the addition of that red really made that bottle come together. We've got a little bit more to do over here. Let's hope it does just as well in helping this bottle come together. And let's hope that as I turn this, I don't put my palm in any wet paint. Looks like it would be a perfect time to do that. Uh, and I, I excel at doing that, but let's hope, <laughs> let's hope it doesn't happen. There, there we go. There's the label on the front side. And maybe we can do a little bit on the inside of that glass. We'll have to lighten it up a little bit. But I think we can get some in there. Oh, there we go. Right, and I put the color down and, and I smoothed it out with the water to... So the color just isn't as intense, right? The color has to come through that glass somehow, some way, shape, or form. So it's not going to be nearly as bright, nearly as pure a color uh, as though you were seeing it on the bottle itself. So we'll just tone that down. And again, still turning this. I apologize uh, if it's bothersome. Hopefully you can see past that a little bit. Again, that is, it really is the way I was. I learned to paint, and um, <clears throat> just a bit hard not to do that after having done it for so long. Okay, now we get to the cola in the glass, and 
there's a lot more light in there. It's a lot less. It's a lot less dark. I guess is the way I want to say that. We got some ice cubes in there, maybe uh, something to spread the light out. So we're going with a lot of burnt umber here, and a lot less of the black. <clears throat> and we're going to hope that uh, it makes a good mix. And then on the sides and a little bit on the bottom. You can definitely see it's darker if you look at the reference photo. So we're going to mix in just a little bit of that. There it is. But we don't want to take away all of that good brown cola color. I'll mix maybe we'll mix in a little bit of ochre in there too. Maybe it's a really light on the side. And it seems as though I have forgotten one thing. <clears throat> and I'm gonna have to grab something here real quickly. There we go. I have forgotten to draw the table that we're on. Something like that. Whoops. Oops. That's always good to do over top of wet uh, wet paint. Well, oh, not quite right. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's our table that we're on. Looks okay right there. And uh, now we can just paint it in. Here's where I've got a larger brush. This is the Squirrel Mop brush. It's great for doing large areas. I do like these brushes that come to a nice point, even though they're big and they carry a lot of paint and a lot of water. Uh, they still come to a very nice point. I don't get any money from them for saying it. They, <laughs> they don't sponsor the channel or anything. I just like the brushes. I think they work pretty nicely uh, for me, anyways. And <clears throat> so I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to use them in the foreseeable future. And just trying to get the tabletop there, get some nice color and a little reflection off of. The bottles on this side if you look at the reference photo it is it's much bluer over here so we'll do that we'll make that bluer on that side i'm not sure why it's quite that much bluer but uh, so be it there's an ashtray in front of this uh in the reference photo i don't want to have any interest in putting an ashtray on here so we're going to just leave that out Oh, we got some phthalo green. That means we're fixing the straw in the glass. There it is. Just a little bit. And we don't want too much color, so let's blend out what we have there. I don't want to make it too strong and look like it's not inside the glass. We've got to still make it look like it's in the glass. Uh, even though we want to have that strength in that color a little bit. Dig in the corner, get some more of that black. On there we're obviously going to go back in and paint some oh I know what we're gonna paint we're gonna paint the background I said the background is gonna be nice and dark I'm gonna paint that in right now there you go and that's what a nice light wash of ivory black looks like that's almost straight ivory black <clears throat> we can go back in there with another coat of it Oh, it looks like I mixed in just a touch of neutral tint in there. And right on around the bottle. Zoom. I mixed more of it. There's not much to the background here. It's a solid color. I'm not trying to make it uh, <clears throat> even an even wash necessarily. It can have some irregularities in it. That's not going to bother me a whole lot. I just want to cover the back with some color so it's not floating directly in the air. And again, it's it's just it's mostly ivory black. I guess if a little other color got in there from my palette where I'm mixing it, that's fine. But uh, there shouldn't be too much and it shouldn't bother the painting all that much. There we go. That black on there helps to push those, uh, push the background back. I don't know. I'm very exciting watching me <laughs> clean my brush out there. 
<clears throat> that was very exciting. Okay, so I've still got a little bit of work to do down here. I've wasted enough time with the background now that, <clears throat> excuse me, now my glass is dry. I'm going to paint around maybe a couple of ice cubes that are there. Something like this and some nice rich color in that cola. As we move down, maybe it's going to get a little darker. But at the top anyway, nice and light. And we're almost to the end of this painting. There it is. A little bit of dark in here. A couple of places. Under there, around the side. Really does look like a glass of soda. A little bit of dark. Maybe that's the straw right there that's coming down. Once it goes in the in the liquid, it gets refracted a little bit. Uh, nothing left to do at this point, but maybe a few highlights, I think. Oh, we got the, the glass down here that we're going to do a little bit with. The glass at the bottom of the bottle is what I'm talking about. It's, it's funny to talk about a glass and a glass bottle at the same time. Uh, just a little bit of highlight, low light, I'm sorry, around the rim. I put a little bit of low light there. It should set off the highlight. Changing colors as I go around, not making them all the same. And that's about all I have for this one. I guess I, I, I'm just putting a little bit of white extra highlights on here. Sometimes I use a pen. Sometimes I use uh, the white watercolor that's on my palette. I'm just finishing this one up. And I want to say thank you if you stuck with me this long. I appreciate it. I'm glad to have you here in the studio with me. Uh, if you like this, like uh, the video, subscribe to my channel. I would love to see you back here in the studio another day. Links down below to some social media of mine. And uh, that's all I've got for you. Thank you so much for stopping by today. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.